the UK is experiencing its biggest increase in rent prices ever. 33% in just four years. And when prices spike like that, it typically suggests a lack of supply and too much demand. And given that that's not going to change anytime soon, does that mean that this UK rental crisis is just going to keep going? Will rents just keep going up and up and up? Well, rather than taking these figures at face value, we decided to dig into the details to understand exactly what is happening in the UK rental market right now. And in this video, we're going to explain what we found and how the situation is going to impact both investors and tenants. But in order to understand the current situation, let's take a look at what's happened over the last few years to get us to this point. Well, firstly, as you can't fail to have noticed, rents have absolutely exploded. Back in August 2020, the average UK rent was £959 per month. Fast forward to June 2024, and it shot up to £1,299. That's a whopping 35% increase in just under four years. So, What's driven that? Well, there are probably two main reasons why rents have gone up so quickly. First off, let's talk about everyone's favorite people, landlords. Now, when rents go up, people are quick to point fingers at greedy landlords. And this time, they might have a point, but it's not the whole story. You see, over the past few years, interest rates have also gone up dramatically, which means many landlords have seen their costs skyrocket. So they've increased rents as much as they can to soften the blow to their cash flow. But here's the thing, landlords can only increase the rent to whatever the market is willing to pay. I know from running my own portfolio and a letting agency for years, if a property is even slightly overpriced compared to what else is on the market, it'll just sit there empty. So a lot of what we've been seeing is actually landlords catching up. In the past, they've often kept existing tenants on rents below market rate, not increasing rents even as market rent goes up, either to keep good tenants or, let's face it, sometimes out of laziness. But when costs went up, they had to take a hard look at these tenancies. We've had loads of people writing into our newspaper column saying things like, my tenant's been there for years and is paying £400 a month less than they should be. I kind of need it now, but I can't increase it by that much in one go or they won't be able to afford it. What should I do? It's been a real dilemma for many landlords and the result has been rents for existing tenants being increased by more than usual. Now the second big factor is good old supply and demand. On the supply side we've seen the supply of rental properties falling. It's no secret that many landlords are leaving the market. There are fewer outstanding buy-to-let mortgages now than there were last year and research from Hamptons shows that the number of properties owned by landlords has been falling since 2016. You might think well if landlords are selling does it really make any difference? The buyers must be either other landlords or people who'd otherwise be renting. The number of properties hasn't changed. But here's the thing. Owner-occupied properties tend to have fewer people living in them. So even if the total number of houses stays the same and the balance shifts from renting to owning, you actually could end up with a shortage because there are fewer people living in each home. But where things get really interesting is on the demand side. One factor is that fewer renters than normal have shifted to becoming owner-occupiers because they've also been affected by higher mortgage rates. So you've got fewer people leaving the rental sector and more people coming in. Plus, there's something else at play here because we've had a massive influx of people moving to the UK. According to Zoopla, the UK has the same number of rental properties as it did in 2015, despite a population increase of more than two and a half million. And the migration figures for the most recent of those years really are staggering. Net migration was 764,000 in 2022 and another 685,000 in 2023. That's about one and a half million people in just two years. And statistically, when people first arrive in a country, they're much more likely to rent than buy, which puts further pressure on the rental sector. Don't get me wrong, this isn't an anti-immigration point, but if one and a half million extra people are looking for a place to rent and the number of rental properties stays the same, it's pretty obvious what's going to happen to rental prices. In fact, Capital Economics thinks that immigration has accounted for a third of the rental growth in the UK since COVID. So there you have it, a perfect storm of landlords playing catch up with their costs, a shrinking pool of rental properties and a rapidly growing population all competing for the same homes. It's like a game of musical chairs, but with sky high stakes for landlords and tenants alike. But like I mentioned at the beginning, as a property investor, you should never take the headlines at face value. So we dug into the data a bit more to see if the current situation is actually as bad as the papers would have us believe. And there is some evidence that the worst might be behind us. The latest survey from RICS, the professional body for surveyors, shows that 38% of their members are saying that rents will continue to rise and that new listings from landlords have declined. Now that does support the idea that rents will keep going up, but it's not exactly overwhelming. And it's a long way down from a high of 66% who said that rents would keep on rising in November of 2021. In other words, it doesn't paint the picture of a market that's way out of balance. In fact, separate data from Zoopla 
strongly suggests that the real rental boom is over. But that only becomes clear when you look beyond the headline. Let me show you what I mean. Back in October 2021, rents for newly let properties were growing at a staggering rate of 16%, but that's come down to 6.6%. Now, I know what you're thinking. 6.6% is still pretty high, right? Well, yes and no. Remember, that's an annualized figure. It's looking at the percentage change over the last 12 months. But here's where it gets interesting. Zoopla also publishes how rents have changed in the last three months which gives us a much more recent trend. And if you look at those three months and project it out over a year, then UK-wide, the level of rent inflation is less than 3%. That's a huge slowdown. But wait, there's more. In London, it's even negative, meaning rents are actually falling. It may be hard to believe, but after years of skyrocketing rents, we're actually seeing them come down in some areas. Of course, there's a strong regional picture to this. London and the Southeast are seeing relatively low or even negative rent inflation, but other areas are still seeing significant increases. For example, Scotland, the Northeast, and the West Midlands are pulling the average up. So while the overall trend is towards slower growth, some areas are still experiencing pretty hefty increases. By the way, if you want a more detailed breakdown of each region and our current investment recommendations, you can download that in the description. So what does this all mean? Well, for landlords, it looks like the days of blockbuster rent increases might be over. And you know what? If you ask me, that's a good thing. When rents are growing as fast as they have been over the last few years, it just strengthens calls for rent controls. Now, while rent controls might seem appealing, they're not actually a good solution and would cause all kinds of problems. But that's a whole other video. From a landlord's point of view, a rental income stream that just goes up in line with inflation is perfectly good enough. If someone offered me guaranteed rent increases indexed to inflation forever, I would happily take it. And given the fundamental forces at play, landlords quitting the sector, the population rising, and not enough homes being built to match demand, it's hard to see how rents wouldn't at least keep up with inflation for many years to come. So while the rental market is still tight, it looks like we might be moving towards a more sustainable situation. The explosive growth that we've seen over the past few years seems to be cooling off. And that might just be good news for everyone in the long run. So now we've dug beneath the headlines and got to the truth of what's happening out there, what should you do with this information as a landlord or property investor? First off, if you have a property that's vacant and you're looking to rent it out, be careful. We're increasingly seeing landlords and agents overprice properties for rent. Why? Well, they've got into the habit of just putting up the rent every time by default. But here's the thing. Depending on when you last let your property, you might not be able to increase the rent this time. In fact, the market rent may now be lower. I know that sounds crazy after everything we've just talked about, but it is happening in some areas. So don't just slap a for rent sign on your property with a higher price and let it sit there empty for weeks on end. And don't just take your agent's word for what they want to market it for. Instead, go to Rightmove, put in the postcode and tick the box to see let agreed properties. This will show you what's currently on the market and what price was being asked for properties that have already been let. Although sadly, you can't see the price that was actually agreed in the end. By being realistic with your pricing, you'll get your property let faster. Not only that, but you'll have a wider pool of applicants to choose from. And trust me, having more options when it comes to choosing tenants is always a good thing. It'll leave you in a far better position in the long run. An occupied property rented to the right person at a slightly lower rent is always better than an empty property costing you money every week. But remember, rents might not be exploding like they were, but they're still going up in most areas and all the forces are in play for them to keep on that way. So every time a tenancy comes up for renewal, check the local market and see if a rent increase is justified. You might not decide to go all the way up to the market rent because you value your tenant and you want to give them a good deal. But maybe you could edge it up in that direction to avoid getting into the situation so many landlords have faced where you're suddenly miles away from what you could rent the property for refresh and you'll never make up the gap. This is self-talk because I'm as guilty as anyone for taking the path of least resistance, but it's well worth keeping your rents in the right ballpark while still rewarding tenants for their loyalty. However, over the years, I've rented out around 700 properties and I found that getting the price right is only one factor to being a good landlord and running a successful business. So check out this video next where I break down six more steps you need to get right if you want to rent a property in the UK.